Welcome back. Let's do some uh, political vigilantism news. But before that, quick information coming in. There's a, a gruesome accident on the motorway. We understand the vehicle num is registered with the number GW922113. GW922113. Just in case you know uh, someone, you know the person, or you know this vehicle, uh, you can perhaps make your, make your way to the general hospital. I'm sure that th that's where usually they're sent to. But as I said in my intro, the trend of political vigilantism reveal a rather disturbing trend of grave disregard and disrespect for President Okufuado. He makes a public warning one day and the next day is another form of violence from the youth groups affiliated to his party. Watch this latest incident from the approval process of DCE for Ada East on Friday, at which a joint news camera technician was abducted. No, no, I'm a journalist. I want you to do this. Yeah, 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 I'm a journalist. I'm a journalist. I understand, but yeah. Yeah. so you have I'm to run and protect me. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Oh. What I'm saying is, yeah. this is something police and there could be, but the other side. Yeah, so I'm, I'm coming. I'm coming. Okay. 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 Action of a police officer trying to stop our team from filming the scaffold that ensued, proud to the declaration of the results. Joy News' camera technician was locked up in a room by some heavily built men in suit after they realized he was filming the fight inside the auditorium. Shortly before the declaration of the results, lights went off, scaffolds ensued, and police officers had no choice but to whisk the ballot boxes away into one of their waiting vehicles. The presiding member and one of the assembly members were bundled into another vehicle. At the end of the counting, there was one rejected ballot. Seven members voted no. 28 members voted yes. <laughs> Representing 77.78% of the vote. May I have the pleasure to invite the nominee here for the necessary confirmation to be done. That was the electoral commissioner declaring the results of the election, but the presiding member, Simon Atakabla, says the results are not true reflection of the process. His alleged police officers swapped the ballot boxes as they took them into their vehicles. Liberty must be chosen by the will of the people. It must not be imposed on the people. Wow, wow, wow. What, 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 what are you alleging? You are alleging that they swapped the ballot box? Yeah, you, you, yes, you can notice it yourself. I am sure that just after the voting, your power was what? Off. They intentionally took out of your, uh, 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 your socket so that they will not cover what is going on. You know, and you have witnesses that even after the voting, police officers asked invisible forces to enter the room and cause mayhem. This is what I was saying came to pass. I said how, how do you know they are members of the invisible force? By you, they themselves know who, who, who knows them. Another member of the assembly is considering other options. The honorable member for Tamatoku electoral area. I am telling Ghanaians that we are not safe under the security of Ghana. But let me tell you something I don't have time for court, I don't have time for speaking British language. But I will face all the rivers where the shrines are, I will face them one by one, and they will see what will happen. I don't. Yes. Why, why, why? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a traditionalist. I'm not a Christian. So I'm also going to pray because they butchered me. They twisted my neck. They, they seized my phone, my money, my constitutional book is lost. Who did all of this to you? Those who hijacked us in the room. The so-called invisible forces. You were there. We were telling you let the people get out from the room because we know that plan that the people said. They are telling the whole Ghana that Sarah is not a DCE and she can never be DCE for that. But the newly confirmed district chief executive for Ada is Sarah Pobi is not perturbed about the utterances as she lazes her boot to start work. It's our duty, our mandate to ensure law and order. But what somebody intends doing 
or crime in, he has intended to commit. Sometimes we are unable to prevent it. It does happen, and it is for us to respond accordingly. Well, someone would say that we should live in a society where all these things should not happen. But it's an ideal one, and I don't know. I don't think it is. Two places in Karaga and in Golu, they have gone after not just mere members of the party, but party executives have been arrested, and they're going to the due process. So we are keeping faith with what we're saying. Keeping faith with what we were saying or what we are saying, and that's what a lot of people have described this. It's just saying, saying, and saying, and no action at all. Sometimes after the sayings, something even more grievous happens. So, uh, so you watched, the, you saw the story from Ada um, East, and then you saw the IGP speaking about what he, he intends to do about the recklessness that we're seeing all over the place, and as, as well as um, the uh, Ambrose Dairy, the Interior Minister. Let me take your thoughts. Saying and what I mean, uh, I'm going to start with you, Eddie. It's, it's it's as though they just keep talking. W to what extent are you convinced that what they're doing is not just what they, you know, the minister, the IGP, everybody else, the president himself has spoken about this. To what extent are you convinced that this is anything beyond mere talk? I think that um, the appointment of security chiefs or security heads should now be done. We should have some reforms in our Maybe we should vote for them. We don't need <laughs> to vote for them. I mean, it should be done by parliament. If mm -hmm. the, the legislature is able to um, put forward full commissioners of uh, police who are qualified to, mm. to be appointed IGP, from there, they were um, through a ballot of a sort. Now, members of parliament, or perhaps the, the security um, committee of mm. parliament, the defense and and security committee of parliament or so should be able to appoint who should be the IGP. If that is done, then we're going to have the system sanitized. Because I think what is happening now cannot be controlled. I've heard the president speak on several occasions that he's directing the IGP to take the bold step of arresting people. I know, I and I do know. know, I mean, we all do know that IGP is appointed by the president. Yeah. But the IGP knows few, his job. Few weeks Why ago, should it even take the president to direct the IGP to do his job? I'm building a point. A few weeks ago, we had a, a, the, 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 the director general of CID being mm. removed from office. Yeah. And when he sought to get some answers as to why he was removed, he said that cabinet directed that he should be removed. At this, at this juncture of our development, cabinet takes a decision on who should be, who should be removed from position as CID boss. If that is done, of, of you, obviously the, the police service is penetrated and I mean, people can hold, right. I mean, people in power now can hold you as a police officer, pinpoint you and say that, look, you are... Do this, do that, yes. do this. So they can control that. them and then they, they'll, bid, they'll do their bidding. Mm. So currently our system, I have heard the president speak on several occasions. Our system is... And is, is, is interestingly, is anytime he says anything about this, the next day something is yes. more grievous. What happened in Ada is, is very unfortunate. Right. I mean, um, we reported on our network, we, we had few slaps in there. Now, what... How, how, how come? What, what happened to your report? Your reporter was slapped? No, no, no. We, we, had, we had visuals of people slapping people. Okay. Abusing them. That's what I I'm see, saying. I see. And, and, and it's quite worrying if you have such a scenario. Just it's the very worrying, at election of a DC. And 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 what is worrying is that they snatched the ballot box a few minutes before they, they had to count it. They snatched it. I mean the light you heard the, the lights the, went the off. The reporter yes. there. The yes. light went off. Then the ballot box was snatched. They took it. Actually, somewhere. the light went off. So this is what our reporter says. And if you hear you heard from the so, uh, the presiding um, uh, member, the light goes off and there's a scuffle. In the midst of the scuffle, the police take the ballot box, put it in their car, and you saw that car there. Uh, it's, it's, it's got tinted glass, that mm -hmm. vehicle. And so, I mean, and this is just hazarding a, 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 a school of thoughts. Like if there is a sealed ballot box already hiding in this car, who would know that's a car right there? I mean, you wouldn't, you wouldn't know anything. And this is not a police vehicle. Exactly. It doesn't look like one of those police vehicles. But it appears that that's what the that was the vehicle that the police came in with well, because our reporter kept saying that 
the police vehicle. He kept, you know. Re re well, our reporter had a different account. Okay. What, what she said okay. was that this ballot box was, was taken away by members of Invisible Force. Okay. Because that vehicle you are seeing on the screen, obviously, can mm. tell you there's nothing on the vehicle t showing that it's a police vehicle. Uh, the, 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 the angle that we get, the angle that we Do you get see from a the, police we, vehicle? We don't, we, I mean, the angle doesn't really make it easy for you to tell whether or not it's a police vehicle. But what There's a, a, a Toyota Prado or so. Mm, but, I mean, these days, the police, car, the police have got all kinds of flash cars. So, you know, but you see, it looks like, uh, okay, there's a similar car at the back there as well. But, um... Well, the, the point I'm making is that the point I'm making is that it is unfortunate. It is very unfortunate that we've gotten to where we are now. I mean, the, the police administration have lost it. Um, I, I don't want to disrespect the president by saying that he has also lost it, because if we have well, he has lost it if we can't control the political yes. vigilantism. If, we, if we have this lost is it this is country. what is happening for you to for for us to impose leaders. On, on, on a district like this. <coughs> no, it doesn't. I mean, we don't have evidence to say that they're imposing leaders. No, this is someone, listen. That's how the people listen, feel. Let's do a trend analysis. Okay. This is someone who has lost the first election. Mm -hmm. they, took him, they took the person back, Sarah Kobe. They took her back. She lost the second election. She lost the third one. Obviously, this is someone who was, who was power hungry. She needed to, to make the mark and win the votes and win the no, hearts. No, no, that won't be fair on, 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 on your part for her. That won't be no, fair. No, I'm on telling her. you on, f on the facts available. This is someone who has lost elections. Yes, but the fact that you lose the three times doesn't yes. mean that you're being imposed on the people per se. I mean, what if the people also. So, expect, there so, are times so that if, people if you go three times, you are rejected by the people. This is not like a, a presidential election where you go and give a different campaign message and all that. So what else did, did she do? I mean, to, if you say that, you have win. to back that with a bit of evidence. If you say that she's been imposed on the people, you've got to that back is, that with evidence. The evidence is what you saw. People slapping people in there. People, people trying to, the, people snatching the ballot, ballot box from the, from the rightful location. It's the ballot box coming back. And then they counted it, and then the, pe the person has won. But the first one wasn't wasn't counted. It, it was not we have let George left George out for it's, a it's while. It's, it's a worrying situation. In. But my, my, my concluding this thing, um, remarks on the on this is that um, I think that there should be some reforms of a, of a sort going forward. If we can have um, a structure for appoint appointment of um, security We're chiefs in this country. Oh, for security chiefs. Ch security chiefs sure, in this country, okay. so that they will be able to crack the rape. They, sh they should be able to hold officers responsible. W without because fear <coughs> of, yes. of, of, um, of being we, 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 Our reporter in Parliament had a, uh, an interview with the um, Amos Derry, and uh, it was shocking to hear from um, um, the, 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 the interior minister that he, he said, and I want to quote him, he said, report them if you know any of them. So he, he says, virtually, we are throwing our hands in the air. If you do know where... Um, these political vigilantes are But coming they're all from. over the place. Yes, <laughs> but he oh says that gosh. if you, know, you do know them, report them. <coughs> That's quite shocking. We anyway. all, we've, we've heard about them, we've seen them. I mean, some of them stormed the court in, in, in Ashanti region and all that. I mean, this is, this is not too good for our image as a country. George. Gifty, <coughs> when this thing happened, I was preparing for my program behind the news. Uh, <coughs> which, which of them? Ada? Radio Ghana. No, yeah, they're Ghana. Ada East. Yes, okay. and the headline story I wrote was. President Akufuado directs police administration to deal ruthlessly with members of vigilante groups. Will the police obey the president this time around? <laughs> and my boss was like, oh, why do you say that? And I'm like, but the president has been speaking. You see, that aside, there's this guy called Samuel Owusu. He's a high life musician. Mm. When I was a kid, my mother used to <laughs> play his songs. So if an elderly person is in a house and thinks nothing bothers him or her mm. one day one day he or she will be entangled with the very problem he so or she will so penny will you so penny will fear not 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 you simply watch death. We are toying with the destiny of this country. Election 2012, I thought I was okay. My girlfriend had her birthday in Lagos, so mm -hmm. after the news, I was in white, white, excited. 
I got the 37, I was beaten. My windscreen was broken. Oh. Because the people thought that I was Your celebrating. White, the white you were wearing yes, was, was to celebrate the, the victory. Electoral of, victory. And I, I don't even, I was not thinking about that. You and were just thinking about your girlfriend. Yes. Recently, I interviewed Asiye Dim Ketia on this. And he was like, gentlemen, you've not been slapped in your air conditioning studio. So you don't see the realities of what people are talking mm. about. But I'm beginning to see the things now. If you watch what is happening, you ask yourself, who is in charge? And you see, when you talk of the security agencies and the interior minister, Ambrose Derry is one man I respect so much. I did national service when I he was I personally had a lot of uh, hope and a lot of confidence yes. when he was um, um, given Appointed. the post. Yes. yes, because I thought that, I mean, you he you, you'd hear a lot of good comments about him. For and how Ambrose Derry, right. I don't go for programs late. And it's something I learned from him when I was doing national service. If that man was late for a program two minutes, forget it, he won't come. So I learned a lot from him. So when he was made interior minister, I was like, wow, this man will work. But you see, there are structural impediments. Take the president himself as an opposition leader. He said openly that he has every uh, reason not to believe that the security agencies are not colorblind. Yeah. So the indication was that the police were you know, speaking the same language the government of the day. So today, if the police are not acting, despite your statement, you are simply telling us that the police administration and other security agents are speaking the same language with the president. If not, why on earth would the president direct the police to arrest hooligans? Who can go and sack the executive? it's pretty common sense. You don't need someone to order you to work when you see people breaking the law. And I was when telling, somebody, to keep the law. I was telling somebody in the NPP that, look, you guys have to tell the police. There is nobody in the police administration who has acted and have been sacked. So they should begin to work as men. You went there because you are qualified to be there. Why will you sit down for some small boys and girls who are politicians to be directing you what to do and George, not to George, do? George, I, I agree with the point you're making, but you see, let's not be hypocrites. I mean, the reality on the ground is quite different. Um, you see, you as a district commander, for example, that that is yes. going ahead knowing very well that you are the district commander yeah. going ahead to arrest some of these um party soldiers yeah. or um members causing mayhem at that place the next thing you find yourself is uh, i mean where you find yourself is that you're going to see a press i mean a, an inter intercom i mean internal yeah. communication of a sort seeing that you've been reshuffled or transferred to there is no evidence to that effect no as but far as the police administration good, is good but but i'm telling you that that's what over happens the last actually and I'm, t I'm telling you not to be. I know G, yeah, something people. like that has happened. But with the police, I'm not aware. Oh, it no, does. it happens. It happens. It uh, unless you, you want to tell me that you it don't does. know what is happening. You see, the truth is that over the last two, three months, we've had a lot more reshuffles within the police service than we've had in any year. Is it normal? Is it routine? No, no, no. It cannot be routine when consistently. I mean, this year alone. been changing this, government. Hold on. This so changing that, are, are you now admitting that when there's a change in government, yes, you should, should reshuffle all There's a problem all with that. No. Yes. So the system, once again, there's a, the there's problem a systemic goes problem. Exactly. And the problem That's is the that problem. the problem is that commanders who tend to be very ruthless with some of these perpetrators of the violence are reshuffled, are, they are transferred as a form of, of punishment. <laughs> it happens. They are victimized. Don't don't tell me you don't okay, know. So you let, don't let, know let me fine. finish my point. But, okay. but okay, over the over the last six months or so. There have been a lot more reshuffles within the police service. And this is, this is all because an MP will call the, the interior minister or an MP will call a big man somewhere and say that, look, the police officer in my, 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 my district, I don't all my constituents, I don't really agree with him. He's, he's, if I give him this uh, order, he does something right. else. So they then, they then change the person. So that's not so how to run the well, country. Gifty, let me continue with my point. Please do. It all falls under the doorsteps of Ambrose Derry, mm. the Honorable Ambrose Derry. When the La Nkwantanan Madina District Assembly government appointee was being sworn in, mm -hmm. I mean, being approved, this similar thing happened. The case is in court. I'm waiting to see what the court will say about that. But you see, with this case, I mean, Madina, um, Adenta, for example, yes. there, were, there were similar issues, but you didn't see the sort of 
disrespect, this sort of disregard it, it for law enforcement agencies and disregard for rule of law. In the case of Lankwantana, the police came there with bodyguards and even the presiding member was not allowed to preside over the meeting. That confirmed the woman. And the man was there, not that he was not there. The case is in court. Let's see what happened. But see, if that thing is allowed to pass, then we have no justification to condemn what we are seeing. No, we have justification to condemn. Because what we are we seeing are is, 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 that. is totally Give condemnable. The, drive on the road these days. Yesterday, I was angry with one guy at UPS in the night. UPS around that place. You don't have traffic there. And you have these guys with these land cruises. Dark spectacles. Boom, 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 and no other person should use the road. They should be giving the way. Who are those people? You don't know Not them. Not a convoy. Not a convoy. One vehicle. And it's becoming non-certain. Some days, you see one vehicle with hazard on. Every other person should give way. Okay, so, so I, who I, are those people? I, 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 know, I do know that last month or so, the IGP um, authorizes men that, I mean, 4 by 4s or... I mean, those who use the V8, that's the, the Toyota Land Cruiser, see themselves as, as, as people in privileged <laughs> position. Well, so no. anybody can no, put so on hazard and move. The, okay. the, 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 the point I'm making is that the, the indiscipline that we witness can be traced to the doorsteps of the interior minister. And he should set up and work. Take, a, take, take Venezuela as a case study. They, have a, they had a beautiful democracy from 1964 till Hugo Chavez was elected. What are we seeing? Some scholars say democracy there is deconsolidating. And before that, symptoms of these were there. So let us not allow these things to happen. If we misbehave with our democracy, we will laugh the wrong side of our mind. I mean, the good thing, by the way, is that next year, according to President Akufada, that's again, if this is not just mere, it's not mere talk, that we'll be um, electing these MMDCE. So that sounds like sounds how like how will election like a plan. of MMDCE stop vigilante groups no, from it, attacking no, people? No, no. What? How it will stop it is that now the people are going to choose by voting. Now they're not going to be appointed by the president. So the presidency won't just sit down and say, Edward Corby, you are um, DCE for M uh, Ada East. As now, so vigilante groups are not only targeted at MMDCEs. No, that, that will Security be... Security um, coordinator who was appointed was attacked. I mean, if you take the story, the issue that happened um, on Friday in Ada, then you say that voting is something that could stop it could a phenomenon that. like that. But I think that the interior minister can do better. You know, okay. when... You see, they are not acting. When there was a directive that they should deal with them, and I had calls from Bonahapo and Upper West and then Northern Region, the guy said, look, They've directed us not to talk. <laughs> Invisible forces, <laughs> troublesome guys. They've directed us not to talk. Gifty, yeah, and I just I a day or two, right, some of them have been arrested. So it means that we have a way of solving this problem. We are only pretending. If only Look, we want the to. NDC as a party equally has got vigilante groups. They, they are only fighting. Yes, but, so, but, but it appears that they are better. Yes, no, no, but no. it appears that they are better we at managing okay, them, well, isn't well, it? Well, no, because wait, we didn't no, see this magnitude. We, can, we, can we didn't see, the, we didn't see this magnitude we of may discipline. Not. We I mean, may not. The, Chances are that we'll get to a stage where they will say, look, enough is enough. And they will get up. So if they get up, well, men already the men, president, uh, but former president happens? has spoken. Former president Mahama has spoken about what is happening, uh, the uncontrolled vigil vigilances, and so uh, I mean, people have so already started asking questions as well. Whether Yeti, do, do you know what happened in Tema some some time ago? It's not far from now. I mean, it was something that happened. There was a a town hall meeting organized by the information ministry or so. Yes, it, it, it was uh, was by I think the Tema West MP. Good. So, <laughs> so heavily built men had a gust to come pick microphone and warn the information minister, yeah. warn a deputy minister, uh, Titus Glover, who was there at the time, I think, warn the MCE, warn any other government of official there or a government appointee over there that, look, we are giving you a short time frame. Give us employment or phase our rap. <laughs> when they had the district, the, the, the Tema region commander, Police commander there. And they were, they, 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 the they minister was there. They, got, they walked away. They walked away. Yeah. Are you not approving of what they are doing? Okay. Well, I don't know. We've been talking about this. And you see, it's like the more you talk about it, 
it, the more it keeps happening, I, I really don't know how to deal with it. Well, that's why I, I'm not the interior minister. So, Mr. Interior Minister, would you please put your men to work? And we've had enough of the talk. Shall we see it really working? Mr. IGP as well, can we really see it working? The things that you're saying, can we really feel it? Because we don't feel safe in this kind of environment. Let's talk about Echo Stu Gabra. He wants to be president. Me and my team spent some time with him this weekend, uh, this week actually, at his Kokobite mansion. Have a look at this report and we'll take it from there when, after the report. First, there were rumors. And then this. I would be an action-oriented president. I believe I can do a good job as president of Ghana. Dr. Echo Spiel Gabra says he has been ready to lead the NDC into elections more than 11 years ago. In 2006, I present myself as a potential candidate of NDC. 2016, we go to an election, we lose. 2017, as you see me sitting here, by God's grace, I'm alive, I'm well, I'm a healthy man, I'm happy. I have my potentials, I have my capacities. Why would any right-thinking person think that I could not or should not be a candidate for the leadership of the party? He is now confident more than ever to beat any of the names circulating, like former President John Mahama, former Vice-Chancellor of UPSA Professor Joshua Alabi, MP for Nadoli Khalil Alban Bagbin, and any other person should they all decide to contest for flag bearership of the NDC for election 2020. Capacity to serve Ghana has nothing to do with other people's capacity to serve Ghana. I think I've just explained it. In 2006, when I was standing as a candidate for the NDC, most of the people whose names you are mentioning today, they, they were also alive. They did not present themselves at that time as individuals who were interested in leading the party. But if today some of them want to lead the party, that's fine. Competition is good for business. Competition is good for churches. Competition is good in classrooms. Competition is good in politics. Even before getting through the first party hurdle, he is already considering reviewing some policies which key players within the NPP and indeed some Ghanaians would have thought have come to stay. The free SHS policy, for example. There's a serious potential crisis developing between headmasters, school bases, and the government as to how do I manage the school when I'm probably being given just five CDs a day to feed the students grown-up children who are between the, say, the ages of 13 and 18 or maybe sometimes older in senior high school you they are fe feeding them with five CDs a day How's that going to, how are they going to balance it CDs? it was not thought through well like many NPP policies so it sounds good to the ES because everybody wants something free and they lured Ghanaians into thinking that if they vote for NPP they will do such free things which when you look through eventually you find that they are to the detriment of the country. Should they can reflect on it, and since they made a campaign promise, I'm not sure they're going to scrap it. They're going to stick with it, with all these difficulties, but it will be at the, at the peril or at the detriment of a road that was supposed to be built that they won't build. It is a hospital nearby in the same community that will not be, it's the same government money. Government I will reflect, it's not, it, at that point, it will not just be a personal matter. There will be a party that I will be leading. The party will have structures. There will be consultations within the party as to what our manifesto should be what our policies would be, and we will review this program alongside many other programs and see what would be the best for the people of Ghana. Beyond the free SHS policy, he claims the one district, one factory mantra is a stolen idea from the Chinese, describing the NPP as what he calls a sloganeering party. He proves to me his readiness for the top job with some rather emphatic comment on two major issues making the headlines, militarization of youth groups actually or supposedly affiliated to the governing NPP and recent comments by Ghana's High Commissioner to South Africa, George A.C. Boating. Dr. Spiogabra thinks President Ekufwadu has no business remaining president if he cannot call his supporters to order. President has a numerous institutions under his control. You are the Commander-in-Chief of the Ghana Forces. Your Vice President is the Chairman of the Police Council. The Bureau of National Investigations exists to investigate and to identify all those who belong to these groups. There are videos of these. You know, these guys have come on video and said, if you don't give us jobs today, we'll come and to Accra and do worse than we did in Kumasi. You didn't see that video. They are, they are not hiding. And I'm saying there are members of parliament who say, we have funded them. We funded them. So we know where we train them. We know where we fund them. 
You are telling me as president, you don't know how to go about finding these people. Then you don't need to be president, so you get out. Okay. If President Nafufadu does not know how to find Delta forces and invisible forces, he does not deserve to sit in that chair. On George A.C. Boating, he expected a swifter response. It's taking too long. This is the kind of thing that within 24 hours, a good president will come out and take a, a, an action for people to know that, yes, this man is really defending the people of Ghana. Well, it, it's so unconscionable because he forgets that the salary he gets every month is not from MPP headquarters. The residence of the Ghana ambassador, Ghana High Commissioner to, uh, in, to South Africa, Waterloo, one of the most exclusive neighborhoods in, in Pretoria, beautiful place, owned by the government of Ghana. But the car that he, dri he drives is followed by the Ghana taxpayers. So you cannot go and say that I'm only here primarily to serve MPP. Well, until the clock ticks for submission of applications for NDC flag bearership, Dr. Spiro Gabra tells me he is farming and mentoring young people. Most importantly for his ambition, he is working on the grassroots. Gifty and Doapia, Joy News, Accra. Okay, so we'll see how he does. Um, but uh, we know also that the NDC have held a, a unity, has held a unity walk as well in Cape Coast. We'll be talking to our uh, Central Asia correspondent to find out whether or not he was there at this meeting because we know that former President John Mahama uh, was there as well. But let me take your... Before you even go to <laughs> your correspondent, I can confirm to you that uh, Coach Pio Gabra was there. Was there? Yes. Okay. He, uh, Sylvester Mensah, um, Professor Joshua Lala. Okay, so all of them were all there. The all of the names there, the key, that we're hearing want to go for, for this already, Those parading themselves to be voted for. They're there. not paraded themselves the say. I mean... They are flaunting the, their uh, names. They are, they are uh, banners and all that. You, you should, that so? you should, you should see the video. Uh, we do have some pictures though. Uh, we should be able to put those pictures up. Um, but in the meantime, we're still trying to call our uh, central regional correspondent, and we get some more details on that. But um, what are your thoughts of Spiogabra? Actually, we fact checked him, and we understand that the, his doctor, you know, the doctor that we known, uh, is not uh, is a is an honorary. <coughs> um, it was conferred on him, you know some time ago, so I don't know if we should st keep calling him doctor, but anyway. He's still a doctor anyway. It's an, on, it's an honorary. Yeah, uh, he's a doctor. I'll call him uh, a doctor. <laughs> As I'm watching, he's a doctor, so. Uh, we, doctor we yeah, but I mean, I, I understand that those, you don't, they're not uh, titles that you, you add to your name per se, when it's honorary. Yeah. It's on, uh, when you have not earned it through, you know, say. A PhD. PhD or yeah. being a medical doctor, that it's not something that you, but le talk, let's talk about him. Uh, Cabra. He wants to be president. Um, this whole thing, like I, I said in that report, first it was a rumor. It was, and then it, we, we heard later that he has said that if John Mahama decides not to go, then that's when he'll go. He actually said he never said that anywhere. Uh, he was just saying that let's give him the first uh, uh, preference or so, and that if the president decides to go, if he doesn't. But now he's out in full force, Spiogabra, I, I, I mean. Does it stand a chance in your in your opinion? Spiro Gabra has always been a, a strong candidate within the, the, the frontiers of the NDC. Um, this is someone who has dared to contest the then vice president for uh, um, 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 a number of occasions, I think. Um, in two, 2006, he says. Yes, he did. He, he, he tried to be the president. Uh, or he wanted to be the presidential candidate as far back as 2006. Yes, yes. So this is someone who has who dared to 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 contest the NDC's uh, vice president at the time. I mean, the the are the are key person who had uh, contested an election uh, with John Kufour, that is uh, Professor Atamos. He dared to contest him at the primaries, and um, it tells you that. Um, Dr. Kospio Gabra has always had this <coughs> idea of, um, or this vision of becoming a president. But as to whether this is the time, I, I cannot tell. I, I think that the NDC currently is going through some sort of um, um, restructuring, and um, they need more of um, the grassroots building. Uh, foundation should be well placed before. Well, what they are doing at the moment cost them anything. I mean, people are showing interest. Well, the party has a blueprint, and the blueprint is to build the, the structures first, f f right from the, they call them branches at the district level, then they come to 
the constituency level, then they come to the regional level before they come to national. After electing national officers, before they elect uh, a presidential candidate. But this is the time so for you to show yourself. No, they are jumping the gun. Those candidates are just jumping the gun. But it's good to to, to mm. put yourself up, up there for people to But so to far, know. none of them has really said categorically that they are. Like uh, the way uh, Mr. Spielgabra puts it, he says, <coughs> I, am, I will be an action president, you know, for example. He, he says things like, I don't see why, I mean, I'm, a, I'm alive, I'm well, I don't see why anybody should think that I cannot or should not go for. I mean, obviously, if you look at his, his credentials or you look at his, um, um, his record, Track record yeah. this, is, this is someone who has been uh, a minister of communications, he's, he's held a communications uh, directorate um, uh, position of mm. uh, the, the NDC when they went into a position somewhere in, in early He's been in education. He's, he's been the... Um, Education minister, trades in, also, in, in uh, an industry, and most recently the trades minister. Right. I mean, this is someone who has seen it all. So I cannot rule him out of the of the competition because I think he's, he's a solid candidate. But you cannot also rule out John Mama because John Mama is a very solid candidate as it, as it stands. Okay. Let this, me interrupt these are people you. Let me interrupt All you, right. Eddie, uh, um, because I have our uh, central regional correspondent. I think that. Uh, I'm missing out a lot of names and words today. I don't know why, maybe I'm just tired. But uh, Kojo, le let me come to you. Thank you very much uh, that you, 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 made, you, made, you made it to talk to us. Um, tell us a bit more about this unity walk in the central region today. Well, it started from the Tildu Sports Stadium. And I think uh, the, the numbers that panned out um, were about um, 3,000. And they painted the entire phones with their colors. And I think they were very happy. They were excited. A lot of patronage, and so it was good. Okay. So it was only uh, President, former President Bahama that did the speaking um, at uh, the London Bridge, the famous London Bridge in Cape Coast. And he spoke on a number of issues. First, he touched on the Sibuati, Ghana's, uh, Ghana's High Commissioner to South Africa. He says that um, he's not really happy about how the presidency or the government has handled that issue because uh, you don't call someone to the flagstaff house and then you make you draft a resignation letter for him to come and sign and uh, you, you draft um, an apology letter for him to come to sign and he says that the apology uh, that he rendered was an apology of an apology and he says that if it were to be his time he would have shown him uh, the his ex exit from, uh, my, from my, pa my panelists here don't agree. My panelists here don't agree. It's actually <laughs> something all. that we, we've discussed already, <laughs> but they think that he didn't have um, that, you know, uh, that good record to be able to even comment on this one the way he is. But please tell us what more he says. Well, um, yeah, that, that, that's one of the things that other, other people also raised. He mentioned other issues. And he basically indicated that during his time, the bus branding... Uh, saga, a, a minister resigned, and so he feels that he has that moral right to comment on this issue and to call the president that, I mean, what George Isibuatin said, I mean, was unconstitutional because he sworn to the constitution that he was going to defend the constitution, and the constitution does not say that. And the president during the campaign also said that he's going to be a father for all, um, I mean, the president for all Ghanaians, and so he's saddened by how things are going because... Uh, the, the high commissioner represents the president in that country. He feels that it is the same way the president also thinks. I see. And beyond that, he says that there are other issues that are, 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 are currently happening with the GPS code and then with other things as well. And he says that just common 3.5 million under the past branding, a minister resigned. And so he, did he say he, common 3.5 million? Exactly. He said common. just common 3.5 million uh, Ghana cities, a minister under his presidency resigned. And so he doesn't understand why the president is not doing anything about the, this GPS code. A code he says that everyone has on his mobile phone. And so it is a huge scandal that a president... But that's also, that's even 2.5 million. It's not even up to 3 million. Any, oh, okay, well, that's in dollars, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> yeah. So he says that, well, it is something, it is becoming one too many. The, the scandals that are rocking this president, the Akufuadu presidency, he mentioned the GPS code, he mentioned the bus, and he mentioned other things as well. And he says that uh, President Akufuadu is taking Ghanaians for granted. He lied his way through to the presidency with propaganda. And he alluded, he made a certain allusion that 
during a football match, when someone is sitting outside the pitch, the person has their fancy to say anything about what is going on on the pitch. And he says that, well, if it was me, I would have fought this goal or that goal. But when the person is uh, handed the jersey to go and play, the person messes up. Right. And in the same way, the Akufado presidency is messing up. People are right. battling with high tariffs, with electricity mm. and water. And the president promised that um, when he comes, rent charges would, would, would be reduced. And as well, they that's speak, a, that's going, going into a lot of politics there uh, for the former president on that platform. But let's look at the w within the party itself. Um, can you tell us a bit of uh, who who was present at this walk? Well, um, Mr. Ekwos Yugabra was there and he granted a lot of interviews and he reiterated his point about this uh, Georgia Yusibwa thing saga and he said that he was going to do everything to make sure that he wins um, the N NDC flag bearership contest. But on that score, the former president indicated that, well, he, he will not bow to pressure from some senior citizens of the party and Ghanaians for him to declare his intention. He says that declaring his intention uh, will, will really uh, distract the party's uh, cause for, I mean, for that unity they are yearning for. And so he's not going to declare it now. He's waiting for an opportune time for him to do so. And he says that the party should not use that opportunity to press. Hello, Kodo. Okay, sounds like a phone falling. That, that sound <laughs> sounds like the phone falling, which means uh, maybe he dropped the phone or something. But uh, it's he's given us quite uh, good information to go on with. So we know that Mr. Skugabra was there. We know John Mahama was there. Like Eddie, you were saying, all the others who mentioned their names or whose names have come up for, for discussion as to who will be the next presidential candidate for the NDC were all there as well. Look at the things that the president, former president, is saying quite a lot. And uh, you have spoken quite a lot. So let me bring uh, George in uh, to take your view on Spio Gabras, my interview with him, uh, the fact that he's well, readying himself to be president. I think you did a good job. And, uh, thank you. And we congratulate you for that. Oh, exclusive dear. Thank you. I like congratulations work. that come with cash. Okay. <laughs> I'll bring it with kindly. <laughs> but you see, uh, Dr. Spio Gabras is a gentleman. Hmm. And so wanting to be president as a Ghanaian, he's got every right. And that is the beauty of multi-party democracy. Okay. And, uh, so it's good. But you see, when you look at the history of Ghana, whoever has become president of this country, apart from Nana Ikufuado, all the others were least expected to be president. In fact, even in the case of Nana Kufuado, the popular voice out there was, this man can never be president. So for me, it is not about going out to tell people who you are, what you can do, how popular you are. What that is it about? It's, for me, I think it's about the choice of God. Okay. Because when you take the First Republic, Dr. So you're Kramer coming from a purely religious perspective. Not, not religious for, yeah. Well, yes, religious. you're coming from a more yes, religious yes. or Christian but from perspective. from the historical trend. Right. Dr. Kwame Nkrumah was not that popular. I'm wondering why he is laughing president. because someone is coming from a religious <laughs> perspective. Is it that you don't agree? Well, <laughs> maybe why, why yes. <laughs> That's his problem. Yes. <laughs> okay. So I think that whoever will become president, uh, like the prophet Isaiah has said, before that person was born, God knew it, formed him or her consecrated the person and ordained the person to be president of Ghana. But what they are doing is for the beauty of the game. All of them are perfect gentlemen. I think, if why not? If their party should give them the chance to lead the country, but it's, it's left with Ghanaian to decide whether they can or not. But Kay. some of the comments that they pass, for me, are the problems. You see, when you listen to Dr. Spew, I will review A, B, C. And that for me is a problem. So as a country, do we have something that is that we can say this is a national agenda? No, of course we don't. We don't. The, even the NDPC's reports, we don't we, we don't we, we don't I mean I'm not sure whether it provides any clear path or any clear roadmap for us as a country when it comes to, for example, education. It's a big problem. Yeah. Why you look at the countries that are doing well, Africa and beyond. 
they've had that kind of sustainability. Mm, long term plans. Long term plans. China, they were recently celebrating their leaders. They are not that many, but call them autocrats. But they have a long term plan. So if already, if Dr. Spiel becomes the NDC, like we know that a lot of things will be reviewed. Can't we have a system of perfecting what we have? Okay. So for me, that's a problem I'm seeing now. And it's like, wha once you don't review this, you may not get that uh, popularity to, 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 to get... Because then you can argue that this is the reason why I was voted for. Yes. I campaigned based on, on this, this and people and voted for me, so that, I have to do it. Problem. Do you, okay. Why can't you come and continue on what somebody has started? What's wrong with copying from China? But you heard what he said. He said that there are structural problems with the free SHS. And that's uh, why people team. are elected people, as but leaders. Eighty percent of the finances or the funds have yet to reach the schools, and so he says there's a, 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 full, a, a potential crisis on our hands. That is a genuine concern. The Minister of Education told all of us that yes, he had a team that came out with this. They may not have it all. If you have something else, his doors are open. So it's not about reviewing all. It's not about but reviewing. reviewing does not mean that they're going to stop it. Reviewing means perhaps that maybe they're going to do something different to make it more effective. So why do you wait? The NDC can only come to power maybe 2020, 2020, 2020 yes. So for the next three years, should we be in a problem? Granted that Dr. Spiel has all the sense. Why don't you <laughs> go and give that to the Minister of Education to implement it for the sake of all of us? Look, okay. when you read the history of America, from George Washington till today, it will give you something. Look, no political party will be in power forever. Okay. Let the MPP be there for 20 years. They will still go and somebody will come. So it doesn't matter. Let's perfect the system and for, move for the, forward for, for, for the, for the all future of, us. of our True. children and the uh, wives and uh, friends and girlfriends and, and girlfriends boyfriends as boyfriends, well yes. okay eddie let me take your quick thoughts on this so that we can after doing this we can quickly touch on the digital uh, dress system um it's still something that uh, it's quite it's still taking a lot of attention uh, from people but eddie your quick thoughts on what's happening in cape coast uh, the former president's uh, speech uh, it appears he's 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 already sounding like he wants to what what Richard Kwejuna could fail to add was the I mean his hill, line dropped. Hill, yes, hill, hitting the the new at the at the, the the head. <laughs> I mean the center of the the head. Also, I don't know how yeah. to call it. But the, the 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 former president did describe the digital address system, the current project as four one nine. Yeah, because it's costing us two two point five million dollars. Oh, okay. And he says, and what snitch, could Jonah... And, and the Snit uh, uh, well, software well, cost... Has, what could Jonah... Cost the country the how much? is not a software. It's a whole IT system. Okay. So it's beyond the software. Yes, it's an that, IT that, system that, that should help in their That was also very pr problem problematic, looking at the cost involved in there. People were very much concerned about... This is something that also went on under the watch of former president. But that, that, that is not to score any point of a sort. But what I'm saying is that... Um, I mean, there are genuine concerns. People are asking, why couldn't we... Um, have a system that could cost less, le less looking at the, the, the what is in involved in there. But what is worrying that we is that we are going to pay, as a country, we are being told that we'll pay $400,000 every month, every, no, year, every year, every year, to Google. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the minister, the deputy minister also said that we won't pay uh, in for 2018, so I guess that we're only going to pay for uh, 20, 2017 maybe. So it's just for But the even that, that was year. part of the discussion that we had here last week. And the idea was that, well, it looks like there's some sort of contradiction, you know, going on at the Ministry of Communication. But George Anda, as I've heard him speak, uh, the last time I heard him speak alongside his minister in parliament, he sounded like a very um, respectful person of his minister. I, I don't think that he would be contradicting her in any way. But, but uh, what, we have, what we, have, we have been told is that um, the, this very GPS has additional services like the emergency service where with just a tap, you can be able to contact the police service, the mm. ambulance and all mm. that. These are additional um, value-added um, services that do not exist on the Google platform mm -hmm. using the Google map. So perhaps these are some of the reasons why it, it is costing us this amount. But we, we must also know that earlier we were told that there are the other companies that prevent, uh, presented far um, higher amounts mm. uh, with respect to how much it was going to cost us as a country so from how I'm, I'm seeing it I'm not um, an IT expert but I think that this this 
project or this very data address system is not bad. It's not a bad idea. We'll be able to to track people, especially when it comes to rev revenue mobilization. I mean, it's going to help. Already, GRA has um, has um, been able to tell us that it is one of the key areas they were earlier looking at. They think that is is a good thing for them. GRA. They are going to uh, be able to those yes. People. They are going to be able to uh, raise more funds um, through um, digital address system and all that. I mean, it is good for us as a country. It's a starting point. I mean, I can see from this government's um, uh, ideologies and how they have started that they, they are in, they, their intention is to harmonize the system and then um, put all information together perhaps in the bosom of, of, of the National Identification but, but Authority. But you see, what I foresee is this becoming a political uh, banter. So we have, we, we've heard the former president speaking about it. This, and, this, uh, this is something that we should be. have done long ago. I mean, take this bold step of... But I must commend former president Mahama because his government also did the street naming. And, uh, but the, the street naming that was never finished. I'm sure there was some a huge amount of the, money that was see, allocated. That is, that is our challenge as a country. They started something. This government has brought in the digital address system. That's uh, another angle. The, I think they said they're going. They're going to continue. Yes. So, so, so I mean, it's a it win-win situation for, okay. for for the country. Win-win situation. George, what 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 are your thoughts on what's happening? <laughs> it just reminds me of my professor Achuayi at the Department of Political Science, University of Ghana. He likes this thing that when it comes to implementation in public administration, there's something called a uh, complexity of joint action when you are implementing something. Mm -hmm. And once you have so many people involved then you begin to get contradictions like you are talking about. Uh, oh, that's just so many, so many people. It's just uh, the, the former, um, the communications minister and her deputy. Ghana Post is involved. Okay. Yes. So Boca when you Com listen to the interview Boca so Com far, is involved yes. as well. So even what the vice president says can be just opposed against what the others are saying. Okay. So that for me is a problem, but it's a laudable idea. Continuity. Yeah, this thing is not a new thing. It's part of what the NDC started. The street you mean the street naming? Uh, yes, it was. Said it's part of what they had no, 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 it's, it's, it's start a, the The process address started, and then they continue. It's a good thing, but I think sometimes we talk too much. For me, when I listened to the vice president, I was like, "Wow, what we are doing is an improvement of what even the U.S. system is." You know why that's difficult for me to appreciate? Mm -hmm. Because the U.S. and the U.K. They, they've had uh, an address system that works seamlessly. Yeah. Seamlessly. I mean, in the UK, all you have to do is sit behind a computer and click and click and click. And the next, you know, maybe a day or depending on what you what option you choose, your items are delivered right at your doorstep. But we are not like that. Yes, we are not. So when the president, when the vice president says that we are working a system that's even better, I think it's it's up for debate, really. Yes. No, no, we, we it cannot be better than it US be because better. US developed the GPS system. They have the headquarters there, um, controlling most parts of the the world. Uh, I mean, with the exception of North Korea and I think few other countries that are not in, in in agreement with the US kind of policy. But the truth is that this is a, a step um, in the right direction. We do know that if you travel out there, you go to UK, you go to US, you tell them you're going to so so and so, you give, just give, give them the, uh, the address, they type it in onto the, uh, um, the uh, GPS in the taxi and the taxi will just send you to where <laughs> you're going to. Maybe that's where we are getting to. I mean, Uber services are also making use of this, this kind of uh, platform, yeah. a Google platform. The additional thing that we are going to have is the digital address system where you have Gifty, say Gifty's addresses, GE, plus some numbers, and then it tells you where you are located, na navigation, whatever. It is in put into the system uh, on the, on the, on the, on the uh, on GPS, the on a GPS in a taxi, and then they can drive straight to, to your house. That is, that is what it is. I mean, where we are getting to. That's what they say it is, right? But yes. If I'm completing my point, it's Please a good thing sorry. <laughs> that we should encourage. But you see, if you have the foundation of everything wrong, you will have problems at the top. I, I, I went for uh, some lunch opposite hmm. the Flagstaff house. You went for some lunch? The yes. way you describe it makes well, it very... Yes, yes. Maybe I don't want to tell you the kind of lunch. No problem. No problem. But see, <laughs> people are chopping up. That is supposed to be... <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's supposed to be... Benefiting from the system. Quarters <laughs> that were built for <laughs> security so. agencies. I'm sure you know that place. I know that place, yeah. Yeah, the Flagstaff opposite. Yeah, yeah. Why you enter there, they've begun building 
slums inside there. And that for me is a genuine thing. We have most part of our streets dotted with slums. And there are people living there. Yeah. Are they not Ghanaians? Don't they need to be identified? Don't they work? Are they not supposed to pay taxes? So we haven't finished solving that problem. It doesn't mean that we should finish that before starting the digital addressing system. Whilst it is ongoing, let's take pragmatic steps. We are not yet closer to elections. The AMA, KMA, and others should start ensuring that there's sanity in the system so that if you say this is give this house, you'll be able to go there. But, but, but George, that is the basis because, for example, I don't know whether you've but downloaded... But have you tried it? Yes, I, I was coming I, to ask. Yes, I don't know whether... You, you, you have? I have downloaded... How does it work? Okay, you download the app. Uh, it used to be Asasi GPS. Now it has Yes, it has they say they developed Asasi. Uh, into uh, <laughs> the, the broker Ghana Post. Say, Ghana broker Post say they developed uh, yeah, Asasi. Of course they, they but developed then it. what G the Ghana Post is using is uh, customized, you know, for Ghana Post. And so we, the Ghana Post owns it, it's licensed. I don't have any problem with it. Now it works perfectly on your phone. Yes, I downloaded the app on uh, Google Play Store. What you do is that you go through the process, then you install it. After install installing it, you you just it, it will ask you to enter your your phone number. Okay. And then your name. Now it will then proceed by telling you to stand in front of your house. Right. So if you are able to go stand in front of your house, you, you may have uh, to. Um, activate your location that is on your phone so that it can it can um, communicate with the Google I mean I mean um, the yes Google um, GPS system so that it will identify where you are once it identifies where you are to give you the address the, the the machine would the system would generate the idea the, the address it by itself uh, I think greater across that with gene then followed by where you are the code the district then so GE followed by a code and all that, then it will give you, so that, that automatically becomes your your um, your phone number plus your uh, your name, then your 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 digital address. And that is what you're going to use for the rest of your... So as far as you're concerned, as far as you're concerned, this looks like a perfect system at the moment. Yes, it looks like a per perfect system because you cannot um, uh, play pranks with the emergency services. <laughs> for example, if I had okay. my, 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 I, I, well, my phone, I'm I could have call the emergency services and then tell them that there's fire here, they'll come, they won't see right. anybody. But I, I'm going to have to take your final comments. send all your information there. I, I'm going to have to take your final comments because I have to wrap up. And, and just, you know, you're, you're just a quick, quick final comments. Let me start with you, George. Well, I think that this is the country we have. We have been applauded for how far we've come in building our democracy. And so those who have been mandated with authority to ensure that the right things are done should do that. And I'm referring to the interior ministry. They should ensure that there's sanity in the system okay. so that we can sleep and dream properly. <laughs> now we can dream, we can think for the country. Very well, Eddie. I'm concerned Quick about one. Cocoa Board. I mean, uh, we have been told that they targeted some 900,000 tons, metro tons of cocoa. And they were able to buy just a little over 587,000 metro tons. They should find out where the yeah, rest of the money, money went is. to and then um, okay. they should prosecute them. They shouldn't make a public announcement. Okay, not press conferences. We want more action, action that will increase or better the lot of our cocoa farmers. My name is Gifty Andopi. I've not been doing this alone. Of course, my co-producer, Forgive Amedeka, director, Yao Forsen, camera, Joel Odro, and fruits and light is by Gabriel Lamponsa, sound by Paul Ankoma Minta. Of course, my distinguished guests today have been George Asakiri, host of Behind the News, Behind the News, right? At GTV. It's Radio of course, Ghana, we, we're actually. paying. Oh, Radio Ghana. Yeah. Okay, we pay our uh, TV uh, our taxes and our t t TV licenses to them as well. And uh, here also is Edward Kwabi, who I call Eddie, he's political editor at TV3. MG, MG. I mean, MG oh, group. MG Group. Media General okay. Group. Media General Group. And uh, all of a sudden, Yao says, Liao Fossen says, let's go. So, in less than 30 minutes, we'll bring you the Joy News Prime. Please stay with us. <laughs>